Hello YouTube and welcome back to part 17 of my series on utilizing Blender as a video editor. Today I thought I would cover some odds and ends because I have been utilizing Blender for the last couple months to do videos for my other channel, uh, which you can see those videos on MikeAndHobby.com. They're for people who want to learn English or they want to practice their Spanish listening skills. That's the real reason why I was actually doing these videos is so that I can actually work on that channel. And I thought I would share my, my learning process with you guys. So I thought that I would put together a video today that would just cover some of the odds and ends, some of the little things that I've learned as I've been doing editing, as I've, as I've been working with lots of different audio and video files. Uh, I, I want to, to show you that there are ways that you can actually improve uh, the editing experience. So. Number one, we're going to go down here and we're going to look at the, the sequencer. And I have a couple of videos uh, that are laid on this sequencer right now. Now, one of the things that I've noticed as I've been importing many different videos and audio uh, things into the sequencer, I've noticed that the frame, will, frame rate will drop. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that one of the solutions that I've come up with or that they provide for uh, solving the preview performance issue, I mean, when the frames start to drop and, and it just starts to really have a hard time uh, showing the preview, one of the solutions they've come up with is a video proxy. And what I've discovered is that you don't always have to use a video proxy if you have enough hardware resources available to you on your computer, meaning you have enough RAM and you have a, a decent uh, powered computer. I have, I have not really needed to use video proxy at all in these last couple months that I've been doing editing for MikeAndHobby.com. So I thought I would share the, the secret. And the secret is really all about how you use your memory cache, um, how the settings are configured on your, uh, in, in your settings. Uh, for the Blender program, and uh, how you pre-seek frames. So let me actually show you right here. As, as I said before in the previous videos, these dark blue um, represents, the bar dark blue strips represent your video, okay? Now if you actually click on one of these, and you have to do it for each of them, if I click on one at a time, I can go over into the properties window, and you'll see that there's an option that says MPEG pre-seek. Now I can turn this, it starts, it's by default at 25 frames. What it does is it's going to actually pre-seek 25 frames ahead of whatever frame that you're playing right now. So that it's going to try to render all the 25 frames before you get to them. So it's kind of, they're ready to go. As soon as you get to the, the, the next frame, it will already have been pre-processed or pre-cached. So we can turn that up. I can turn that all the way up to 50. 50 is the highest number it goes to. So I always go to each of my videos strips and I change them to 50. We'll bring this all, all the way up to 50. Do it to each of these. Okay, so that's going to make it so it's going to pre-seek 50 frames of each of those video strips so that they're going to pre-render before we actually get to them. So it shouldn't slow down and have to do them. It shouldn't have to do them in real time. It will have them uh, pre-cached in a sense. Now that's that's a way that you can actually pre-fetch that will increase the performance. Uh, after you have actually set that, you you set those uh, the, the pre-seek setting, you have to remember to refresh your sequencer. Down here, there's this thing that says refresh sequencer. Whenever you actually click the refresh sequencer button, what you're doing is you're saying, wherever I'm at right now, pre-seek the 50 frames or whatever from that point. Like it kind of like is saying, it's it's saying force it to uh, reset the pre-seek. And, and so if you start to get a stutter, or if you start to get to a place in the uh, where the, the video starts to really slow down, go down and just click, uh, pause your video as you're playing back in the, pre in the preview window, and just click the refresh sequencer button. And you'll notice that your frame rate will jump way up because it, it's kind of like saying, okay, we're gonna stop and we're gonna pre-seek. Now, another thing that you can actually do to improve your performance is to go into the file menu and set your, your memory cache settings. Let's go into the file menu, or file over here and user preferences. And if you go to the system tab and you scroll down, you'll notice that there is a sequencer clip editor setting right here. Now we have prefetch frames of 500. Uh, you can set, I don't know if yours is set to 500 by default. I think that's what mine was. If it's not, put it all the way up. Uh, and then your memory cache limit. Now this right here is, I have mine set to 12 gigs. Uh, I think it's set to uh, somewhere over one or two gigs. I can't remember what the default setting was. It's such a long time ago that, that I set that and I forgot about it. Uh, you can actually, if you have a lot of memory available on your computer, if you have 16 gigs, if you have eight gigs even, uh, boost that amount. And what it's basically saying is uh, create a pool that is, uh, that is bigger for, for, uh, for, for utilizing 
um, as memory for Blender. And uh, I, I brought my up to 12. I probably could even bring it up higher than that if I really wanted to. But I've I've done pretty well with 12 mega uh, the 12 uh, gigabyte cache. It's just reserving that space for for the Blender program while it's open. So all you gotta do is set that. You know, you can drag it, um, and or you can type it in. You know, or you can click these little uh, arrows, uh, whatever, um, and just save your setting. And that should pretty much do it for some of the uh, the performance features, odds and ends that I wanted to talk about. Now, another thing that I actually have found myself really commonly using is the box selector. Now, you may have noticed that y it's kind of annoying after a while uh, when you have to actually uh, right click and then t hold your shift button and right click and click and click. Sometimes you just want to select a group of things. And the thing that's really cool is that uh, in the Blender program, they are aware of this problem. And so the solution is they have the box selection option. It's just the B button. You just click the B button and you'll see the little crosshair up here. Now, once I actually click my left mouse button, I can actually highlight anything and let go, and it selects all those things. That <laughs> is a huge time saver when you're dealing with lots of uh, little uh, strip fragments, you know, video or audio fragments that, that you've cut up and stuff like that. That was a huge time saver for me, and I didn't discover it until maybe a month of, of video editing. So I hope that those little odds and ends that I've, I've covered are, are as helpful to you as they were for me, and I'll see you guys next time.